this is just going to be like an overview of what the framework is here. Requirements to get started and we're going to build like a really small app just to how the whole framework connects the dots. And if you guys have questions, post them in the chat, ask any, anything. Okay, so Django is pretty much a high level Python framework for web development, as opposed to like, like an iOS app or an app on the tablet. This is for developing on the web. Um, it's fairly easy to spin up a web app pretty quickly with it. And you get this admin site out of the box, which is one of the coolest features of this in my opinion, and it's got database management. Um, I wouldn't recommend using anything Python 2 as it's not supported anymore, but um, you want to use some sort of Python version <laughs> and then a virtual environment. I'll explain what that is. So this is the link for downloading Python. I made these little GIFs. So this, this is how you see what version you have on your system. If you want, if you have like a Python three that you downloaded, you could check to see. Okay, if you don't have a Python three, I would navigate to that link. I could share my slides too, if you guys want. Um, and the, and that pick a Python version. I think I'm familiar with like 3.7, 3.8, doesn't matter. Download those, okay. There are a few options for a virtual environment. Pretty much a virtual environment. Okay, so in this framework, we're gonna download things you could use already that you don't have to rebuild. Like they're called libraries. And what you wanna do is download all that stuff into a virtual environment. So then when you deactivate that environment, all that code is nowhere else, just like in your project. So you'll see this. I personally like to use the second one. It's Venv because it's part of the Python standard library. You don't have, there's no additional installation and it's pretty easy to spin up. I'll show you guys here. So here I'm making a directory on my desktop, making a folder, just calling it understanding Django. Going into that directory and there's nothing in it. And then this command is going to create a virtual environment in that folder called env. You can, you can name that whatever you want. I just named it env. Why not? OK. There it is. It created it. Now you have to activate it. And then you start developing the app. So this is how you activate the virtual environment. You run source, you go into that env folder, the binary directory, it's activating this activate script. And then you know it's, it's working because that env is up there. All right. Okay. Now we're gonna install like the actual framework into that virtual environment. Um, not sure if you guys know what pip is. It's kind of like, it's a package manager, kind of like NPM, if you do any front end work. So, so basically, instead of like cloning code, you could just run this pip command, pip install, and install like files and folders. All right. So in the virtual environment, Django is now in there. Okay, so Django has this concept of like a project and then a bunch of apps. So the project has like the URL configuration, the settings, and then the apps have all the like CRUD operations. We'll get to that later. Um, let's see here in the virtual environment over here. We're going to create a project. This is just the Django command to do that called example project. Yeah. 
and I use Sublime for my text editor. I don't know. I just always have, but I don't have like a, a deep opinion against a you know, an IDE. Okay, so there's our virtual environment. Here's the project that was created from that command. I'm just renaming it to SRC, just for, to organize. Um, and it's got a bunch of files that are generated for you. Okay. There is a file that's generated called manage.py. This file allows you to run different Django commands. So, and what that means is like all the stuff after this Python manage.py, the words after that are the Django commands. So migrate creates database tables. So once these migrations are applied, you're gonna find a database file. It's like a SQLite file in binary. Um, but you could, you could hook up a Django app to use like Postgres, a bunch of different databases, but SQLite 3 is the default that Django uses and it, it's fine for now. So there's that manage up. That, this is all auto-generated. This is created. And when you run these commands, you want to make sure you're in the directory that contains that manage.py file, or else it's going to be like, we don't, we can't find that file. So it's in the source directory. There it is. And we're going to apply we're gonna create the database right now, pretty much. All these OKs are like creating this. Okay, another command that we could use is run server and that starts the server. Somebody told me once to never live code. So I like made a bunch of these pre-recorded gifts. Okay, so the server's running and it tells you exactly where to go. So that 127.0, that's localhost. You could substitute the word localhost colon 8,000 and it's the same. There you go. It works, this shows you that it works. You can click on the documentation link, do a bunch of stuff now. Cool. This is just another link to the docs. Um, pro tip, make sure that you're reading the version of the docs that you actually need. Um, at my last job, we were using 1.11. I remember reading three and it, some, there are some changes, so just be aware of that. <laughs> okay, so now that the app part of this is, I don't know if you guys are familiar with the concept of CRUD, create, read, update, destroy. Um, when you think about any app out there or data that pretty much uses this concept. Okay. So we're gonna build like a, a little blog app. Um, start app is the command to build, create the app, and then you can call it whatever you want. Make sure you're in the right directory <laughs> that has the manage.py file. Run the start app command and then I'm gonna call it posts because we're gonna make some blog posts. 
And there it is. It created that folder. And actually it created a bunch of files that you would need to start building things automatically. Like there's an admin file, there's a models, views. If you want to write tests, they're all in there. Okay. If you don't register, every time you create an app, if you don't register it, it, it won't work. And you'll, you'll wonder why, and that leads to tears. So like, make sure. <laughs> Make sure you want to go into, actually, I skipped it here. Go into the project, go into the settings, and register the app in the installed apps area. So this is just the name, what we called it, posts. That's it. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is create a model. Um, Model is just a way of creating some form of data. So like putting the books on the bookshelf. Lucky for us, there's a built-in model that Django has that we could reference. You'll see that. Um, in our models file, we're gonna create a class with what it is, it's a post, and we're gonna inherit from Django's models. And then we're gonna create these little attributes. So in the posts folder, go to the models. If you see at the top, there's an import. We could use the thing that we're importing. And by putting it in the parentheses, we're inheriting that functionality from Django. And we want to create different attributes. So like a title, an author, you can create whatever you want. And you in Django, you have to actually define the data type too. So like a title is a character field. A description is a text field. Um, in the documentation, you, could, you can find all this out. And it gives you more detail. Like the character field, you have to add a maximum length. Some of the other data types, you don't have to do. You don't have to add extra things. Okay. So once you create this, let's say you create a post and you want to access it in the database. If you did that, it's just going to return this like funky looking object in memory, but to make it like human readable, we write, oh, sorry. <laughs> Here, we define this double underscore string method. It's called a dunder method, magic method. Um, that will make it when we try to retrieve a post, we're going to get the title instead of just this random like object. And this this is helpful in the admin portal because then you'll see the title of the posts. Okay. Every time you create a model, it's data. So Remember the data with the database, you have to migrate. Um, so we're going to, we created the model, we have to run make migrations, and then we're going to have to apply that. Or else there will be no place for the, the posts to be persistent. So that command creates this migration file. And in that file, you could see those attributes, the title description, and you get the ID automatically also. It's a primary key, which is just a good way to reference the object that you're looking for. All right, so we created a model, created a migration, now we have to apply it. Cool. 
pretty much says that we have a post table that we could start adding blog posts to in the database. Okay, so now when we run the server, we're gonna go to slash admin. This URL was automatically created when Django was installed. All right. So yeah, what the heck do we do? Um, we are going to have to create what's called a super user, which gives you access to a lot of things in order to get into the admin portal and do certain things. So I created one with the word, with the username admin, left the email address MD, and the password just has to be eight characters. I think I made, make sure your passwords are actually legit and secure. But for this, I think I just wrote password. <laughs> Once you set up those credentials, you could log in, go back to the URL and log into the admin portal. Yeah, if you ever, if you get this, this page isn't working, make sure the server is actually running. Cool. This is one of the beautiful things about Django. You get this admin site that shows you, that's the user we just created, the super user. Um, you don't want that user to be super user anymore. You could uncheck the box. You get all these user permissions. You could actually create custom permissions um, the more your app is developed. You can manage people by groups too. Okay. So we created a post model, and but we don't see it in the admin portal. And in order to see it, you have to do what's called registering it. You call this register method on it. And then you see the magic. So in the admin.py, all you do is import the model, import that class. So this dot just means like you're in the same folder. Here it is, it's in the same namespace and you're importing that class name and you're registering it. And there it is. And from here, you can actually start creating posts and doing stuff from the admin portal. That title and the description are the two attributes that we added. So if you add an author, that would show up there too. That's it. So this is part of like those CRUD operations, create, 
not quite read yet. We're going to do something about that. Update. This is updating it. And destroy. You can delete it. That's cool because we could do it all from here. Okay, so the next thing, so think about it, like you're building an app and so somebody has to type a URL in and see stuff, right? So we're kind of going backwards. We're going towards the URL right now. Um, the next thing we have to do, we, did, we created a model. Now we're gonna create what's called a view function or view. It's a Python function that takes a web request and returns a response. Okay, so in the view file, we're gonna create this view function. Um, Django usually originally started out with function-based views, but then later added these things called class-based views. So it's a way to like templatize functionality. Um, you did, so you don't have to write the same code over and over. You can kind of like inherit like when we created that class post, we inherited functionality. You could do the same thing here too, but for our purposes, we're gonna do, um, we're gonna write functions. Okay. We're gonna import the object, then we're gonna access all the objects because like our goal, okay, our goal with this is to list all the posts that we see onto, onto a website. And then we're gonna reference, okay, so <laughs> in a view function, view functions taken a request and a context object is what we need to return and these, so uh, this object has this key and this value, like all the posts are referenced by this key. This key will be referenced in a template, like an HTML template. This will make more sense soon, I hope. <laughs> so we are going to create this and create a template. So in the view, views app high, we're creating this postless view function that takes in a request. We're importing the post model. We're going to assign it to this variable called posts because we want to get all of them from the database. We are not going to buy supply. Um, and the context object is what needs to be returned. Passed into this render function. Here, that index.html we need to create that. So, okay, so that's our next step. So we did the model, kind of created that view function. Now we have to create like a template so you could actually see stuff. So, and it's roughly gonna look like this. In post, we're gonna create a new folder called templates. Then we're gonna create a folder in there called posts. And then the file, the actual index.html in there. Okay. 
can't remember if this slide actually. Yeah. Okay. So next one. Okay. So yeah, we want to make sure that we're referencing that template within the correct way. So we added the templates folder that Django will look for automatically, but then it's going to the posts folder where we created that index file. So that's why we have to add, tell it where to go. All right. Okay. So now we have a way to see all these posts. We have the view function, but then there's no way like a user, they can't really go to local host, right? So now we're gonna create a URL. So the admin that we originally went to, that localhost slash admin was already created. So underneath it, we're gonna do, you can call that whatever you want, but posts. And then, so, okay, this is the URL pattern for Django. You create the path and then this is the actual function name that's being referenced. Okay. So this is in our project, the original project URLs. So we are importing the function that we created, which is in posts in the views file. We're going to create the path, the words that go after that local host. And then we're going to reference that function. So it knows when you go to the posts URL, it knows like, go to that postless view function and do, do what it's telling you to do. Okay, in order to actually see those posts, Django accesses the variable with these like double brackets. So if you remember in that context object, there is a key and the value. The value was us going to the database, getting all the posts. The key was whatever we called it. This is the key. So in the HTML, we're going to pop that key from the context object so we can see stuff. All right. The URL path that we created is just posts. So we're going to go there. There it is. Okay. Right now it's returning like all of the posts at once. It's called the query set. So it's better if we see them one by one. So what we're gonna have to do is iter iterate through this query set. So I don't know if you guys are familiar with, oh, here, a little typo there. Um, like a for loop, we're going through for each post in that variable that had everything in it, we're going to return each one individually. This is the syntax for doing that. And you always want to end the for loop. There you go. Now we only have one. So let's create more. Mm -hmm. 
just to be able to see more than one. Creating a quick second post here. Going back to that URL we initially created, and now they're they're next to each other. So to make that better, we're going to just wrap it in a P tag. There you go. That's pretty much it. So a recap, the models describe our data. Um, pretty much our example data is a post, a blog post. Posts have certain info, like a title and description, author, whatever info you want to create. Um, the admin, if you want to see something in the admin, you have to register it. The views are function based. They're also class based, but that, that's another thing. But um, they deal with query sets, which is like when we got all the posts. There's a context dictionary where you reference those keys to whatever the value. You get the value based on those keys. And there's a render function. URL, it tells telling Django to which URL path the user must go to see the data. And that's pretty much it. That's Django in a nutshell. There's obviously a lot more you could do with it, but if you guys have any questions about anything, feel free. Email, LinkedIn, Twitter, whatever you guys want. So hopefully, hopefully you learned something or learned something new. <laughs> That was great, Maddie. Thank you.